Hello, David. Hello there. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, 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 Richard. How are you? Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, ha, that is my husband's name um, because this is his laptop because I'm going for better quality in recording and my laptop is old and wouldn't be able to do any good quality. My friend used to have a go at me whenever I would send him auditions I filmed on my laptop. And he's like, what, what are you doing? Why are you not using your phone? And I was like, I don't know, because well, yeah, I like my laptop. Side note, have you always had green eyes? I haven't, I've got blue, bluey gray, but it could be that the lighting here and the fact that I've got the sunlight right in front of me here is maybe making my eyes look greener than they actually are. That could be, it's just, I was just there and I was like, oh, I'm doing a really bad job because I was like, I've never noticed his eyes before. Well, it's also, I've never noticed how, how orange your hair is either. So, I mean, it's, there you go. Really? You, this is the same way it was when we were filming in Portugal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, that would be quite funny if you hadn't realised that. And I was like, my hair's always been this colour. There you go. I'm just, I just so blinkered to things. I just don't look at those sort of details. Maybe when you were in your Appamantus zone, your eyes went like evil dark. And that's why I never that's noticed it was method acting. Yes. Um, on that note, how are you doing in isolation as an actor? How are you coping? How are you doing projects? Are you just like accepting it is what it is? Um, I'm probably a lot like most people or most actors, uh, that when this started to happen to begin with, for the first few weeks, I panicked a bit and tried to jump on as many different type of projects and, you know, just trying to keep myself as, as busy as possible, thinking that if this finishes quite quickly, I don't want to be out of the loop of things. Yeah. So I, there was a, um, there's a, uh, online, uh, Shakespeare uh, sort of performance thing that's happening at the moment called The Show Must Go Online. Oh, um, my friend was in that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, that, you know, Martin did it, and um, uh, I did the second one, which was, they're do, basically doing a Shakespeare play every single week, starting from the beginning of the Shakespeare canon, in the order the plays were written. Oh. So I did the second one, which was The Taming of the Shrew. Um, and that's done as a Zoom performance, uh, actors from all over the world. And what the guy who directing it, Rob Miles, has done is basically he's he casts it, you know, from all different people. You you basically send in your stuff to do it and he'll, you might get picked for it. And then you basically arrange times to rehearse on Zoom and then you do a live performance. I think it was Thursdays we started, but now it's every Wednesday evening, I think it is. Mm. Um, and... Um, yeah, they, they put it on YouTube so people can comment at the time. And it, it was totally terrifying to do um, because you're relying on technology. Um, and as much as technology, everyone loves technology. I think everyone sort of had to try to come to grips with Zoom and Skype and house party and all these different things. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and you're trusting on your internet provider and how good that's going to be. And that's, a little bit scary and not um, a or anything like that because you know you it, it would turn into one of those badly dubbed movies where you're, and other and the dialogue has come at a completely separate time yeah exactly so it's it's um i found it nerve-wracking as well because again you've got to have the you're not learning the script beforehand so you've got the script on your screen or you've got the script somewhere so you can have a good eye line for acting with other people and you've still got to give a bit of a performance to it as well because you know, it's not just, like I say, it can't just be boring reading the script and just being mm. dull with it. So, um, yeah, I did that. And I've done a few, a few friends have done sort of like play reading things as well. They just wanted to keep themselves active. So I got involved with those things as well. But I found myself sort of running, you know, running those things down a bit now and sort of just not wanting to really be involved in those. Mm. Um, because, one, I'm not a big fan of of sort of the zoom performances the zoom thing there i think some people can embrace it and really get behind it um i don't think it's determined on how good a screen actor you are about how good you are on the zoom in terms of doing that i just think it's it's a, it's a different, completely different style of doing acting 
and trying to communicate it in a certain way to be entertaining. And uh, I, for me, the technology is still getting in the way, and so I'm not a big fan of it. Um, and so I, I'm sort of I've stepped back from that a little bit now, and I've just got I've just I've stopped really thinking about the acting thing to a certain extent because it's there's no point. Um, it's you know you know we don't know what's going to happen yet. I've got projects that are meant to be happening later on this year, including a, a, a small film called Miss Anthropos, um, which uh, is hopefully going to happen towards the end of the year. But really, everything now is is the end of the year at the earliest. So um, uh, it's so I've got a cat who just joined me on the table, which is really uh, don't go away. No, let's oh. see the pussy cat. My pussy cat was in my interview with Saul. <gasps> Hello, pussy cat. <laughs> What's the name? That is Judy, um, our cat Judy, and we've got another cat Maggie, named after our favourite actresses. So uh, um, oh, I was going to ask, but, uh, that, that's interesting that my mind went because. Weirdly, because me and my friend Anthony, we call each other Judy and Mags. I'm Mags, and he's Judy because he's tiny. Um, but actually, when you said Judy, my mind went to like Judy Garland, and I was like, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> no, not nothing that extravagant. Uh, she's nowhere near as interesting as Judy Garland. Um, so uh, you know, have, she's um, a litter of kittens. Please name one, Liza. <laughs> Liza. Liza. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, they're, they're, well, there's two females, so if we have kittens, then something's gone drastically wrong in the world. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so yeah, um, acting was, it, it's, yeah, I, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really talk, you know, going for that at the moment. I'm sort of using this time as a time to step back and maybe just get things done that I have wouldn't have time to do when we go back to the real world and things go a little bit crazy again because it'd be so busy um doing a lot of reading doing learning the piano um oh, you're learning on the piano yeah so yeah doing that but learning not learning it because i feel i've got to learn it as another skill learning it because it's an instrument i've always wanted to get more familiar with and there's some songs in there that i really want to be able to master and sort of have a sort of a, it was like a, a party trick you got a party trick that's my party trick um <laughs> So it, it's a passion to learn it, which is nice. Um, and yeah, so that's um, that's pretty much what I'm doing at the moment and doing exercise as well, trying to make sure that this is not becoming a reason for me to get fat. Um, so keeping up the exercise as much as possible. And that's about it. Yeah, we don't want to have to reshoot all of Appamantis' things and change out the outfit and be like, it has to be bigger. Oh, actually, you were in, you're almost in one of the only outfits where you could get at least quite bigger and it wouldn't be noticeable except on the face no it wouldn't be it wouldn't be noticeable but mine was a very free-flowing type of outfit um you know i could i could bloom to the size of marlon brando in apocalypse now and i think i could still get away with that particular outfit exactly because not everyone puts weight on their face and it's just on the on the body and so yeah where my outfit was i was snatched in like it was just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, hopefully I don't have to bend down at any point because that will not happen. I will break. <laughs> I miss my outfit. I liked it. I love my outfit. It's like this beautiful red, a little itchy, but fashion is pain, darling. Well, exactly, exactly. I think what you're saying is very true, though. I have had to say to several of my friends who are losing the plot a bit in terms of trying to still feel like an actor during this time is I keep saying like a doctor on holiday is still a doctor. You know, you're, you're not, you're, whether you're an actor or not is not justified by whether you're in something right now, because this is not our fault. This is not due to laziness. This is not due to you not putting yourself out there. It's just what it is. And we, I, I, I like you have basically not engaged in trying to validate that I'm an actor in isolation because it's like I'm an actor it's, but I'm just not working right now because no one's working yeah. because my, my entire industry is shut down <laughs> no one's working I wonder I mean they're talking about when they come to the film industry about um having to maybe try and do films and it literally be a 
skeleton for the I, self isolation thing for the entire thing. So you have you know fourteen days of self isolating. Whether it's before seven days of self isolating before you then go to the film set, and then once you're at the film set, you've got to be there for the entire run of the film to for everyone, cast and crew, and then at the very end you isolate again for the seven days and then you can go on your way and that's the way it works i, I can't see that being a, a feasible way of actually doing things realistically but um no because you know, maybe someone will attempt it well no because you would have to pay the actors for all the days that like you know suddenly a two-day role is being paid for a month and that's just not feasible well also yeah. films don't, i mean films films take months to make um so especially if it's a big blockbuster type of film so things like that so i don't know how the only thing they could do is they could do you know, focus more on the smaller intimate independent type of things which you know can sometimes take you know two to three weeks to film you know and you know initial photography and do that and but it's still it's a big ask for every cast and crew to pretty much put say six weeks aside where they can't go back home to see their family and friends and everything like that so i don't know yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you, you know, even if you try to do something like Carnage, the Roman Polanski film with Kate Winslet and Jodie Foster, where it's just four actors in one location. I don't know, you and I might have a different experience of this because obviously touring life, there's plenty of times on tour where I'm, I don't get to go home or have my own space for about three weeks of it, just depending on where it's going in the country and whether you're staying in hotels or whether you can get back to base. So I don't know, we would not be hugely opposed to such a thing, but... Mm. Yeah, I mean, but I, I, it's really, I suppose, it has to come down to... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, there's so many factors that come into it. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't... I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the position in terms of being a film actor where those sort of things would come along on a regular basis anyway. So mm. I'm... You know, I, there's something I, I'm more concerned with the theatre aspect and how this is going to affect theatre in general. I, I'm, I'm not including West End theatre, which realistically, big musicals and things like that. I know that's probably next year that, that those things will start to reopen and so forth. But in terms of touring theatre, regional theatre, small venues, um, how quickly that's going to start happening is going to be of interest because I suppose like a lot of actors who work in theatre, they've got, you know, they're looking, if anything, towards the Christmas time and the panto seasons mm -hmm. when that's when not only the actors make the money, but the theatres make the money. And realistically, you know, I think every theatre in the country is going to be looking, that, desperately hoping that their theatre is going to be up and running for that sort of time in a productive type of way. Otherwise they won't, really be reopening at all no um, no they, the small regional theaters where you were tour to with christmas shows if they're not going to last a whole year of not having any shows that's just not i don't know i mean i uh, yeah i'm I, i've in theory maybe got a christmas show but it's they they canceled their summer show which was open air um I, I just don't know. And, you know, then it's also like, okay, but you sign up to do that and then turn down things like film that potentially actually might have a more... I think also the problem is the conditions on who can work, because they just um, announced that, you know, film and TV can go back to work. That's it's being decided by people who have no idea of the concept of what a film set's like and how you can't social distance. You can't social distance in acting unless you're doing that no. um, Beckett play where they're in the bins and you just put everyone in a bin two metres apart. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's interesting times, which I'm tired of people using because a lot of people don't realize the phrase is we live in interesting times and it's a curse. It's not, it's not a philosophical thought. It's actually a curse. I blame Terry Pratchett. Everyone's using it who've read that and they don't realize. And it's in the book as well. Ah, really? Okay. Well, I should ask my wife because she's a big Terry Pratchett fan. So I'll ask her about that. Terry Pratchett, man. So good. 
Um, what uh, else are you doing to keep yourself busy besides playing the piano? Are you doing okay? Like, mentally, I feel, is the biggest battle. Um, that's not so much of a battle I've found. Um, I've never been a person who's been a big sort of social person anyway in terms of going out, um, whether it's to the pub or to to meet friends or just gym, you know, generally I, I've, I'm very much a homebody anyway, so... I'm going to have um, to watch you here for drinks every night on filming. <laughs> like, I'm not really a social person or goes to a drink. It's like, really? Really? Those lovely cocktails we had every night but tell a different story. <laughs> Well, yes, but I think I was probably one of the first to leave that drinking session every single night. Um, I don't think you were, though, were you? Uh, uh, behind, behind the scenes gossip, we shouldn't talk about it. Um, but no, um, so, yeah, that's not a, so much a big, big problem there. I mean, we're lucky in terms of where we are. Um, I live in South London. We've got a garden which is a blessing. I know that there's a lot of people out there who haven't got you know, outside space to use, but we have got a garden. Um, also, I've got a park that's close by as well. So in terms of, you know, South London's quite a green area anyway. So in terms of having a place to run or to walk or to cycle around, I've got that around me. Um, so that hasn't been a, a big problem. Yes, there are certain days where you feel the limitations a bit much. It's more when you're sort of, having to be around other people which makes me sound like a real sort of scrooge i i hate people um but no it's more a case of when you've got to um well not so much now when things you're getting used to it and maybe people are getting a little bit more considerate sometimes um but that whole um going to the supermarkets you know and do, yeah, um, even just even just going out for a walk and walking on the path and seeing someone coming towards you, um, and that little bit of a fear that is there, and you're you're sort of you know, aware of you're aware of your surroundings and you're wondering why they're not aware of theirs. Um, yeah. So that's been a bit that makes it more tense. Um, but being at home is absolutely fine. I yeah, I, I, I don't mind it. it. It's like having a bit of a holiday. Um, which is a sounds like a really horrible thing to say because you shouldn't be having a holiday, you know, during this period. But I think there is something to be said for actually be able to step back and take time for yourself and not feel ashamed of that mm -hmm. and not feel that you, you know, it, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel that you have to use this time to write that you know, that novel you've always promised you're going to write, or you shouldn't take the time now to, to learn that language you've always said you're going to learn. Um, it's like, no, if you, if you, people want to do that and people want to embrace that and enjoy doing it, that's great. As I enjoy doing the piano stuff there, but it shouldn't be a thing where you should try and say, I'm coming out of this with a particular skill and I'm not wasting my time. There's nothing wrong with, you know, conserving energy and just getting through it. That's not wasting your time. If we had, absolute knowledge about how the rest of the year was going to be um we go okay that's fine i i've got a clear understanding now this is exactly how it's going to work and i know that by this point i'll be going back to some sense of normality and so therefore i've got this amount of time to do what i'm doing and and do the, but we haven't got that and um you know it doesn't matter what the government say in terms of their you know plans for you know their, their projected plans for things there it's still very vague and um and yeah as a yes you know, as an industry you know we are sort of the end we're seen as the entertainment industry and uh, we're very much at the end of the queue in terms of um the, any of the government's thoughts in terms of how it's going to work for us um so i think you, we're going to be waiting a long time before we get any sort of clear idea about how we can try and go back to what we we want to do, what we can do. So, and therefore, you know, I don't know, if you can afford to keep going the way you're going, if people are getting universal credit, if people are getting money, you know, um, through, well, this week is going to be a sort of self-employed thing, isn't it? Um, where you can sort of go online and do that or furlough. Or furlough. Um, if you can do, 
those things get and, and keep going, that's fine. And don't feel guilty about that because that's something that you know you're entitled to have. Mm -hmm. Um then I think just yeah, keep doing I mean I say I mean I've got a bookcase of so many books here that I just have built up over years. Um, that I've always gone, yeah, they're ones I'm going to read on holiday. And every, I tell, every time I go on holiday, I take a script along with me because normally I'm doing a, some sort of project when I come back from holiday. So I'm therefore I'm taking the script to learn. I don't take any books to read anymore. So um, it's nice to actually be able to sort of go, let's just sit down and, and read a book. Let's watch those films that I have never got around to watching. Um, let's have do some exercise, enjoy the time we can have outside. Um, and yeah and, and and do things that we want to do because once the, we go back to something resembling normality if we ever go back to that um it's going to be a busy period for the, and it, ha it has to be a busy period for the acting profession because there's going to everyone's going to be falling over themselves to try and jump on as many different things as possible um and we're going to have to really throw ourselves into into that in order to actually try and get things and um and try and make a living from it so i think it's going to be a really busy time 2021 is probably going to be a bit manic for everyone and i think use the time now you've got to enjoy well relax enjoy yourself get things done that you've always wanted to get done but be prepared the next year is going to be crazy hopefully fingers crossed or oh, I'm going to be interviewing you in 2021 and be like, how's isolation going? How are all those books you'd be reading? <laughs> oh, it, I mean, it's interesting because the way they're talking about the films, obviously this whole thing about the whole cast and crew having to self-isolate and do the film together, that's not far off the way that Miss Anthropos was being done in Portugal. If the hotel had been right next to the film studio, then pretty much the whole thing, because we, we obviously had to be at the studio the entire time for all the day everyway, anyway, because of the transport situation. So we were very much a sort of, a, you know, the cast and the crew were very much together that entire period anyway. So it wasn't far off that. So um, it's interesting that just Maximiano got in there first, really, with the idea. Mm -hmm. He should basically, he should have, yeah, he should have grasped that idea. He could have made a lot of money from it, patented it. <laughs> How to isolate with a film. No, I mean, that's true, actually, because the, I think of the crew, three of them came every day from where they lived in Lisbon or outside Lisbon, but all the others were in the hotel with us. So, yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe that's exactly how it's going to go down. Thank you so much, David, for chatting with us today about isolation. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to chat to you and to your friend next to you. Um, he's been quiet. Um, I like that. I like quiet people. I play um, him because he's like, I can, like, I sit back like this and it's like a comfy chair and I can just play my computer games. Great. <laughs> a little bit suspect as well, though, to be honest. A little bit suspect. I've never thought of that, and now you've ruined the experience of playing computer games in this September, because now every time I'm going to do it, I'm going to think of, wow, I'm just basically, yeah. I'm not even going to say what it is. Filthy. Filthy mind. No. Isolation Filthy. Horn, David. Filthy. That is terrible. Anyway, I will bid you, <laughs> of all the recordings I've done so far, I think ours has gone on the most tangents. Um, I will bid you adieu, and we shall chat anon. I'm trying to do Shakespeare, it's not working. Well, farewell, good sir. Oh, oh wait, what's the black other thing? Beshrew me. Beshrew me. What does he say? Like, hey nonny, nonny. Hey nonny, no. Oh dear. I know I can't I can't do uh, black bit uh, black other Shakespeare. I can't do it. Pish. Is it pish, my lord? Like he has three of them, doesn't he? Like, you know, oh beshrew me, my lord. And he's like, one more thing from you, and it's a small step to hey nonny nonny. And then he says something, goes, hey nonny nonny, and he gets kicked in the growing <laughs> on that note on that note i think we need to cut this off now and okay take care Dave. Bye -bye. you too <laughs>